when it comes to technical interviews, it's no longer... Hey, nice to meet you. Tell me about your biggest weakness. It's more like... Hey, here's a problem. Cody, let me see your weaknesses. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's a bad way to explain this. Hello world, and welcome back to another video. So this video is... Oh. Okay. So this video is all about technical interviews. What are technical interviews? How to prepare for them? Some tips and tricks. Then we can talk about some resources. So what are technical interviews? So technical interviews are a way in which companies gauge your problem solving abilities. So in theory, what they want is they're giving you a question, a technical question that you have never seen before, and they want to see the way in which you solve it and if you can solve it. So if you solve it, it's kind of more obvious, like, is there a correct solution? You know, does your code compile? Does it produce the right results? Have you thought about the edge cases? Does your solution solve for the edge cases? So that's the if you solve it. But then the how you solve it gets really interesting because let's say you see this technical question and you're like, Yes, I got this. I'm about to use my hash map. I'm about to have all of one complexity. You know, something like that. But let's say you solve it and not once you engage with the engineer in the room that gave you the problem. That can be seen as a red flag because they also use technical interviews to see how good you are at teamwork and how good you are at taking criticism or advice from somebody. Let's say you solve the question, however, the time it takes for your code to run is like really, really slow. You know, that's going to be seen as a red flag because, of course, you want a solution that is not only solves a problem, but it's also time efficient. So it's pretty fast and then space efficient as well. And by space efficient, like let's say you use like 10 data structures in order to solve this problem. That's going to require a lot of space and a lot of storage. And that's not really seen as a good thing. How should you prepare for technical interviews? So this would depend on when your technical interview is. So let's say your technical interview is in about three weeks. My advice would be pick a language that you know well, you've coded in, you've done projects in. And from there, I would do as many questions you can a day and start to look for patterns and start to get a feel for how you like to solve it and really practice talking out your solutions to somebody. You know, if your technical interview is in a couple of weeks, you don't really have time to do the advice I'm going to say next. However, after your technical interviews, I would say, like, maybe try the advice that I'm about to say next. Because the thing is, with three weeks, you don't really have time to dive deep into every data structure and to really, like, dive deep into the different capabilities of the programming language you chose. How that's totally fine. You know, I've been there when I've had a company reach out to me and I had to figure it out in a week. So, you got this. But, yeah, I would say, actually, like, get off of this video, go to Leak Code, and just start doing problems. However, if you're like me, like maybe you're just doing technical interview questions for fun, or maybe you don't, you're not applying to companies, but you want to stay ready so you don't have to get ready, I would say, here's my advice. So the first thing I would do is I would pick a programming language. And I feel like what most people do is they just pick a language that they're really familiar with, which is, you know, very reasonable. And that's what I did. So the first programming language I learned was Java. So that was what I did my technical interviews in. However, now after I experienced more languages, I've coded in many different languages. What I like to do my technical interviews in is Python. I know I've talked about Python in a previous video, so you guys know I really like Python. But the reason why I like it with technical interviews is one, there's less boilerplate code. And what boilerplate code is, is like that extra syntax, you know, it's all the extraness of the language that you need to add in order to get your code to run. In other languages, it might take 10 lines of code to do something. How in Python, it's like it's more quick. Like for example, if you want to loop through an array in Python, that's just one line of code and it's so easy to write. 
or why I also like Python is they have a lot of built-in methods that when like let's say you're doing a really advanced technical interview question instead of like having to go through the steps like let's say you need like reverse a string let's say go through a for loop like all of that these are all one-liners so you can really focus on like the true problem you're trying to solve at heart so yeah I would say if you have time like really dig deep into like why you want to code in a certain language like let's say you're a front-end developer and you want to get to know JavaScript more, this would be a perfect opportunity to code in JavaScript and practice this because you get to learn the language better and at the same time, you're still solving technical interview questions. However, disclaimer, like solving technical interview questions in JavaScript is really hard. Okay, and then after that, if you watch most videos about preparing for technical interviews, they're gonna tell you two things. You gotta know your data structures and you gotta know your algorithms. And this is very, very, very true. But I'll just also like to add on top of this, like let's say you're trying, you want a job as a front end developer or front end software engineer. They might ask you questions related to that. So for example, they could say, hey, in JavaScript, how would you implement closures and promises? Or they can be, they can say in HTML, what does the doc type at the top of your like, code what does that mean so even though you have to know your data structures and your algorithms like they can also ask you questions that related to their company so for example let's say you're applying to netflix they could ask you build a recommender system in which you would recommend a tv show to an existing user or you know something like that but yeah at the end of the day your data structures and your algorithms or how you prepare for technical interviews. So if you have time to do this, I would say like maybe each week or each couple of days, choose a data structure and just go like, go ham. So what I mean by this is, for example, let's talk about, let's talk about stacks. So first, I'd say, are you able to explain this data structure to somebody that knows no type of computer science? And I say this because if you can explain it to a five-year-old or someone with no experience, then you really understand it. Like, for example, I really like the quote by Albert Einstein, and it's like, if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. So, for example, a stack. The way I would explain a stack is I would look at a container of tennis balls. And in this container, you can put balls in the container. And this is a considered a stack. And the way a stack operates is that the last thing or the last element that you put into the stack, that is the first element that you take out. So they like to call this like, last in first out as a little short way to remember it so for example if you have this container and you had to pick a ball out of this container the only way to get this ball unless you start like slicing or all that stuff is to really get it from the top even if you pour it out what comes out is the ball that's on the top so yeah so no like a real world um kind of like analogy that you can use for a stack and know how it operates like for example even though I said like the last one in is the first one out then it's like the first one in is the last one out so you know like you don't know it like backwards and forwards and then after you really know what it is I would say in whatever language you chose know how to build it from scratch and then if they also have a built-in way know how to do that so I'd say practice doing that and then after that I like to know some real world examples of how a stack is actually used. Like for example, I love the example of an undo button, you know? So like when you keep pressing undo, they save your most recent undo on the top of the stack. So let's say I was on one home page and I go to the next home page and then I undo. It knows my most recent undo because it's on the top of the stack. Or another example I like to use for stacks is like the curly braces. So, you know, in some editors, if you're missing a curly brace, you know, it's going to be highlighted in red or it's some way it shows you that you're missing something. And the way it does that is through a stack. 
So let's say you have like a curly brace and then a parenthesis, but then the next thing you have is a curly brace. What happens or the way I like to think about it is like this curly brace and what's on top of the stack, it doesn't match. So that's how it knows that there's a problem somewhere. So yeah, like, so really like dive deep into these data structures, you know, get geeky with it and just like really try to understand it. And then after you think you really understand it, I'll say do some practice problems using that data structure. So for example, with the stack, like let's say you saw a problem that said reverse a string. Of course, there's many different ways you can reverse a string, but like try doing it using a stack because like you'll just put the different elements into the stack and then when you pop each element, you know, that's like the first element in like the reversal of the string. Woo, I feel like I am talking a lot, but I hope this is benefiting someone. So after you've gone through, you know, stack, queue, hash map, hash table, tree, you know, all these different data structures and after you feel like you have a strong understanding of them, after that, now you're just going to do a whole bunch of random questions. And the site that I really like is LeetCode. However, now they have this thing where, like, you have to get premium to, like, answer some questions. However, there's still a lot of free questions. So I'll start with LeetCode. And then another website I like is HackerRank. That is another website I would go to and just start doing these questions. But how just don't do it and look at the solution. Honestly, in my opinion, I think it would even be better to try a problem and even if it spends you a week to figure it out than to look at the solution. Because at the end of the day, during the interview, you won't have a solution. So get your brain to think in so many different ways and honestly, you will, if you keep trying, you will like get the solution to the problem. So I would say that's how you should start. Like just do different problems and like take notes. Like you'll start you start to see patterns like, hmm, every time I don't need duplicates, I can use a hash map, you know, like stuff like that and keep notes and keep a journal and really start digging deep into these different data structures and algorithms. And then I kind of talked about already some resources, but leak code, hacker rank, Cracking the Coding Interview. It's a book, but I'll also have the PDF in the description below. These are all great resources in order to really start preparing for these technical interviews. There's also another website where it's kind of like a game and you can either pair up with a friend or someone random in the world and you guys like get into like a code fight. So you basically see like you, you guys get the same questions and you see like who can solve them faster. So, you know, if you like a game type atmosphere, that one's pretty cool. Some tips and tricks for interviewing. I would say what people sometimes do is they just really want to solve the problem. So they don't really spend time creating the algorithm. However, I have done interviews where I have developed an algorithm that was so detailed and so like, you know, like it really like was to the point. It was kind of like pseudocode in a way that they were like okay we see that you understand this problem let's give you another one and like the whole interview was basically me just doing like pseudo code because in the end like they really even though you will code you know on the job they want to see how you problem solve because when you come to their company you're going to have problems that you've never seen before or you're going to have to come up with creative solutions to problems. You know, that's what being a software engineer is all about. So what I really want to see is like, how do you attack these problems? How do you think? So I would say, I would even like, sometimes like when I know an algorithm really well, it's so quick to code it. So like, let's say my interview is 30 minutes. Honestly, sometimes I would spend like half the time, 15 minutes, just thinking about the algorithm, you know, writing out notes, writing out pseudocode. And then when it comes to actual coding it, it's just like, okay, like it's just really like converting it, converting it to code and like just getting it to compile. So I'd say really spend time on your algorithm. But I mean, it might get to the point where you're like, shoot, like I don't even know how to solve this. So that's when you might have to code and think at the same time. But if you can really plan, draw diagrams, all of that before you start coding. And then another tip I will give is really break down the problem 
And I know you probably heard this advice a lot, but like try to solve the simplest problem before you start expanding. Like for example, let's say I'm making a form field on one of the pages. First, I'll try to print hello world on the screen, you know, get my environment set up. And then after that, let's say I add, even though my real page will have like 10 different like text fields or text boxes, I'll start with just one. See if I can type into that. Cool. Then after that, I'll say, let's put a button. Let's see when I submit. Sorry, my phone was overheating, so I have to move locations. But if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, honestly, I'm here for you guys. So if you want this channel to be about interview prep or interview questions, I got you. I actually decided to do this video because I got a DM from somebody and they're like, yeah, how do I start preparing for these interviews? And I just said, do lead code. And they went to the lead code website and they're like, whoa, like what's all this stuff? So yeah, so if you have any ideas or if you want me to cover something, just let me know. I have an Instagram, Maya Loves Code. Also have a Gmail, Maya Loves Code at gmail.com. So yeah, if you have questions and you don't feel comfortable like leaving them in the comment below, just let me know on these different platforms and I got you. And yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. If you run into any problems with these technical interviews, let me know. And yeah. Happy coding.